told you. <clears throat> and if we're gonna do shoe reviews on this channel, then you better believe that they're gonna be done the this messy happy way. And that is clearly overproduced, loads of time consuming effects that are completely unneeded, but lots of energy and hopefully bring a smile to your face. So I'm not gonna do a shoe review like lots of other people do them. In fact, I purposely haven't even watched any other shoe reviews of this shoe on any other channel because I didn't want their opinions or judgments to color mine and I wanted to do it my own way because I'm a really simple person. Some may say that quite often, but I am simple in that there's only a few things I really want to know when I watch a shoe review or when I think or look at a shoe. And really, is how much is it going to cost me? What does it feel like when it's on my foot? And is it going to make me a faster or less injured runner? That's it. But I do appreciate that there are a lot of other things that people want to know about shoe reviews. So I'm not just going to give you that. I'm going to touch on all the other stuff. But ultimately, I'm sure we just want to know what do they feel like they're when they're on our little tootsies and we're out there pounding the pavements. Am I right? Probably not. But we'll give it a go anyway. Now, these shoes came to prominence about a week or two ago at the time of making this video. And that was because Jim Wormsley, one of the world's best long distance ultra runners wore them in his 100 kilometer world record attempt. And although he sadly missed out by an unbelievable 11 seconds when you're talking over six hours of running, the Hoka Carbon X2s were the big chat about what he was wearing on his feet. He's a Hoka athlete and they're marketed as long range weaponry. And they are the premier shoe on the road running Hoka Oni Oni brand. So they're the top of the line for Hoka. So I wanted to get a hold of some. I wanted to feel what they feel like on my feet and I wanted to talk you through all of my findings. I can compare them to the Alpha Fly, which I also have, and I can actually compare them to some of the lower cost, but still good trainers like the Pegasus 37s or the Adidas SL 20s or even the Asics Gel Nimbus 22s and 23s. So I'm gonna give you a few comparisons as well. But first, let's talk about how Hoka Oni Oni markets this shoe because Doing a little bit of research on the internet, it, it's interesting. So the Hoka Carbon X2 is marketed as long range weaponry. So we're talking half marathons, marathons, ultra marathons. Obviously you can go shorter if you want to, but that's how they're marketing it. But what struck me was the kind of words they use when they're talking about it on their website. Let me, let me just read you this. Scrutinized with a focus on fit, the Carbon X2 employs a refined collar shape, notched tongue, I don't, okay, I get that bit, an engineered mesh upper with embroidered TPU yarns and extra reinforcement around the laces. I mean, does it look good? I'm quite simple in that, I just want to know what it feels like on my feet, but they're making it sound cool. But this is the bit I really wanted to touch on, and hopefully you'll see this on the screen as well. The Carbon X2 in detail, this is what struck me. Carbon fiber plate, so it is a carbon fiber shoe, has a plate in it. Gusseted tongue. Come on. I really, really think you could have used a better word than gusset. Gusset. Nobody likes that word. It's like moist. It's just not a nice word. And yes, it may be a gusseted tongue, but it's just not sold on the language they're using here. So let's move on very, very quickly and touch on the stats because again, they may mean nothing to you, but they may mean something. So let's just quickly touch on them. On both trainers, male and female, there is a five millimeter drop, which means it's five millimeters higher at the back than it is the front. And it's supposed to kind of drive you forwards a little bit. Also, the weight is 239 grams for the men's shoe, 198 grams for the women's shoe. I mean, I just, weighed mine and they're 241 but again what's a gram of weight here or there between friends on a shoe here's what i'm really interested about what it feels like on but before we go to me out running to tell you about how i feel about them let me just tell you a couple of concerns that i had up front that when i put them on they were coming up or it felt like they were coming up quite small so usually my trainers have a little bit more room in the toe box i feel like a little less constricted they felt tight across the top of the foot as well onto the big toe and i wondered how that was going to translate to the on the road feel but i'll leave that for on the road. I went out with them on first time, first impressions, and I took the GoPro. So let's cut to me 
giving you the first impressions. <laughs> So I'm pretty much exactly halfway into my first ever run in the Hoka Carbon X2s. I'm running a half marathon today and I wanted to see how responsive they were. First, first, first impressions are very positive. And as I'm sure I would have mentioned in the studio, thanks to the magic of editing, my biggest fear was that these were too small for me, that there wasn't enough space in the tow box. I felt like, in comparison to the majority of my trainers, my toes were much nearer the end of the trainer, and I wondered how that was going to translate to being out on the road, but honestly, can't feel it at all, can't feel any issues, they don't feel too small, so that's my first worry alleviated anyway. I mean, I'm going to base most of this part of the video on just how they feel on my feet whilst I'm out here running because to me that's the most important thing it's not price it's not drop it's not weight it's what they feel like and in terms of impact on the ground they certainly don't feel as what's the word spongy cushiony as the alpha flies um, but the reactivity as in how I feel like I'm being pushed forwards off of each footstep um, is the same so it's not necessarily a negative that it's not as cushiony uh, they just feel really different the carbon x2s feel stiffer on the ground but like i say as reactive and certainly as light they kind of feel like they're driving me forwards with every step and that can only be a positive whether it's actually happening or not i have no idea but that's what it feels like while we stop for our gels and we're like three quarters of the way into our run i would say from me all positive haven't had any negatives they feel good really reactive really light what will be interesting for me is how my legs feel tomorrow now because i do like to see what my recovery is like after i run in certain trainers and i know there's some that i recover better in than others so let's see what tomorrow brings in terms of these and we've got what 5k to get home ish yeah nice so there you have it that's what it felt like while i was out on my first run wearing those for a half marathon now i've had a few days to reflect back it's tuesday now as i'm filming this and a few people i spoke to on the internet about these shoes and what i was trying to put my finger on while i was out there running and i think i was alluding to it that it felt like it was pushing me forwards and i can't find the comment now but steve i think it was commented on something out in social media saying isn't the sense of inertia huge and, and that's the word I was looking for. It just felt like every time my foot hit the ground, it wanted to come back off the ground and not just that, but it drove me forwards. And I couldn't put my finger on it, like I say, while I was out there, but I think it's a sense of inertia, you know, a continual moving forwards. That's what I was looking for. But how do they compare to, say, Nike's top of the range Alpha Flies? Well, they are very, very different shoes. Let me tell you that. I don't think either of them are bad shoes. That is 100% certain, but there does seem to me to be a difference within that about £100 in terms of the price point because the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X2 come in at about £160. So not exorbitant, not over expensive, and maybe an everyday long range training shoe. Brilliant. The Alpha Fly is coming at £260, that's a £100 difference and in fact I barely use my Alpha Flies, I use them for races only but here's the difference between the two shoes as I see it, as I feel it. The Carbon X, the Hoka Carbon X2, they felt like they absorbed the shock of my legs hitting the ground less. There wasn't as much give, it did feel a little bit harder on the joints. Like I say, I still felt pushed forwards, I still felt driven forwards by the shoe, and they still felt very nice and light, lovely and light. But there was a real tangible difference between those and the Alpha Flies. And as you'll know if you watch the Marden Half Marathon, that I have trained and raced in the Alpha Flies, less training, more racing, and I did the 5k PB in the Alpha Flies as well. The only way that I can genuinely describe the difference, and this is absolutely no disrespect to the Hoka Carbon X2s, because I will definitely be using them as part of my rotation, 100%. But when I wear the Alpha Flies when I'm racing, I smile like 
It's almost involuntary. I smile when I wear them. I just feel joy in them. And yeah, they're a bit shady round corners, but in general, there are, there's just something about them. I can't put my finger on it, but it doesn't mean that you need to rule out the Hoka Carbon X2s because they're a great pair of trainers. So if I were to put it on a scale, we've got the Pegasus 37s and SL20s and trainers like this on a price point down here. We've then got the Hoka X2s and the Gel Nimbus's 22s and 23s on a price point here. And we've got the Alpha Flies and Vapor Flies kind of up here. And I would say that they're nearer the lower a price point, lower is a word by the way, they're nearer the lower price point in terms of how they feel on my feet than they are to the higher price point. I That's all I can really give you in terms of my feedback. I don't know how to quantify that more than I have, but they just felt like, um, yeah, they're a good shoe. They propel you forwards. I was happy wearing them. They felt light but I couldn't feel huge difference between them and say the Pegasus 37s SL20s. I could feel a huge difference between them and the Alpha Flies. So they are a great rotational trainer for me to have. They will see me do really well on my half marathons and beyond kind of training runs and I'm gonna factor those ones. And my A6G on Nimbus 23s, which I've just got and I will be reviewing in the next couple of weeks. I got the Tokyo Sunrise color, by the way, because the UK color schemes are absolutely terrible. So if I had to give you a sound bite for the Carbon X2s, I would say this. Solid, fast, light, yes. Mind blowing. No, but a really good trainer nonetheless. They didn't really take my breath away like the Alpha Flies do when I run in them. And yes, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, mm, he hasn't actually run hard in the Carbon X2s, but he has run hard in the Alpha Flies and vice versa. And you're absolutely right. I haven't yet, so it's not a complete fair rounded picture comparison, but what I will be doing in the future is I will be running hard in the Carbon X2s just so that I can get a comparison of how reactive they are when you up the speed. Tempos, interval sessions, harder half marathon running. So stay tuned for that because that is coming. But that's my honest review, as honest as I could get it. I bought these out of my own money, by the way. I wasn't gifted them, I wasn't given them. I feel no need to be biased in one way or the other. And if you're still interested, get out there and get yourself a gusseted tongue. Man, I can't finish on that. What can I finish on? Oh, exciting stuff coming Sunday. I'm gonna be telling you how your phone can keep you injury free and illness free. Interesting. See you Sunday.